So this video is going to show you how we're going to use the edge finder as part of the uh, process in making the piston. So this is your piston drawing uh, from the workbook, uh, page 38A. So if you could all open that up and turn to it. So what we're seeing here is Here's the stock you would start with. By this time you've already turned your stock into the piston. And then you'll also notice there's an additional feature. There's a hole through the piston on the small diameter. And this is the hole that will uh, mate the piston to the crank wheel uh, using the crank pin. The crank pin will go through that hole. So this is an operation we're going to perform on the milling machine. After you're done on the lathe, we'll move over to the milling machine to drill that hole. Uh, so we're going to talk about the setup, how you go about doing that. So if you look at the dimensions, you'll notice uh, there is a dimension number 6, which says that the center of this hole is 1.625 from the, the end uh, of the large diameter part of the piston. If there's a temptation to say, well, the overall length is 1.813, I can subtract the 1.625, figure this out, and just move the drill a little bit. But we're not going to outthink the drawing. Always follow what the drawing says. All right, so, so what we have to do is locate uh, the drill at this point. We'll also be center drilling and then drilling through. You can also see you'll be able to check on your tap and drill card to find out what kind of a drill will give you a .144 hole. All right, now let's also take a look at the the other view, the end view of the piston. You also see that we're going to have to make sure that we drill the hole right through the center of the piston. Uh, typically, this point here at the very top has a name. It's called top dead center. So we're going to have to make sure we find top dead center. So we're drilling the hole right through the center of the part and we're not offset one way or the other. And so we're going to use the edge finder to help us uh, with that. So before we actually use the edge finder, and then here, this is the edge finder. I'll describe it a little uh, more detail here in a minute. But let's first look at the mathematics involved uh, with the edge finder. So this will be a top view of the piston sitting in the vise of the milling machine. And uh, we have a half inch uh, diameter at this end. And this will be a top view of the edge finder. And it's very typical for edge finders to have a diameter of two hundred thousandths of an inch. All edge finders aren't that. You might run into a metric edge finder, but most are two hundred thousandths, and you can easily confirm it by just taking calipers and, measure, and measuring it. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the edge finder uh, up to the part until it touches the side of the piston. And since we have a 200 thousandths diameter, then at that point, you know that the center of the edge finder is 100 thousandths from the edge of the piston. And also, since we know the diameter of the piston is 0 0.500, you know that you have 250 thousandths until you get to the center line of the piston. So, you have 350 thousandths in order to get the center of the edge finder over the center, uh, the center line of the piston. Now the edge finder is going to fit right in one of the collets. Collet's going to screw into the spindle. So once you get the center of the edge finder over the center line, then any drill you put in your spindle is also going to be over there, over the center line. So, and as you know, for the X hand wheel, for all the hand wheels, it's 50 thousandths per turn. So you can easily tell how many turns of the hand wheel will cover that 350 thousandths. So we're going to use the edge finder for that purpose. And then once we have the spindle right over the center line, 
Then we're going to come over here and we're going to use the edge finder on this end right here. And again, we'll bring the edge finder up until it just touches the end. At that point, we'll know we're a hundred thousandths away from the end of the piston. We'll use your, your hand wheel to center the edge finder over the end of the part. And then all you have to do is look at your drawing to figure out how much you have to move in order to get over the center of the hole that you want to drill. So it'll be a two-step process. Now you could do all this visually. Um, you could put a center drill in there and you could visualize everything, but for our purposes probably is not good enough. And since we have the edge finder, uh, we'll use that. So here is the edge finder. It has a 3 8 shank, so it'll fit right in one of our collets. And the end of the edge finder is, has a diameter, as I said, of 200 thousandths. And it also has a little flat on it, uh, which, which is useful when, when you're using it. So this is, this is um, a very basic edge finder, and you could, it has an audible signal that you'll hear and also a visual signal that you will see when you know you're at the right place. And it's also spring-loaded. You see that I can um, offset the tip. So we're going to start off with it offset, and then as we approach the part, then the offset will start to disappear. So we can go ahead and just load this up into the collet, screw it onto the spindle. Uh, you don't need to tighten anything too much. We're not going to do any cutting with this, and we're going to be operating at slow speed as well. might even just go hand tight. Okay, So, hopefully you can see this okay. Now the other thing I've done is here is your piston and we're just loading this into the vise. Now we also have to make sure the vise is square as well so that once you find the top dead center at one end of the piston it's also the top dead center on the other end. So we have a little, a little brass spacer here the piston's going to rest on it for support, and then when you drill your hole, you're just going to drill into the brass, which is fine. Okay, so we'll load, tighten the piston down in the vise, and then what you're going to do is bring your edge finder into position. So we'll bring the edge finder so that that 200 thousandths tip is down opposite the, the piston, like that. And then we also just, we're just going to make sure that that, we're starting off with a, with the tip offset. Okay. All right, let's get some, some power here. Now we're going to run this pretty slow. And Hopefully you can see that. You can see that sometimes um, people will, the slang for an edge finder is, is, uh, is often called a wiggler because you can see the tip wiggling. Okay, and that, that should be enough speed. We're not going very fast. And then you just use your, you come up a little bit here. Then you just use your Y hand wheel, and then as you get close, you slowly approach the part. The wiggling is going to start slowing down, and at some point we're going to get a visual clue and we're going to get an audible clue. I'm just approaching very slowly. Right there, you might hear it. Right there, I don't know if you hear the clicking. All of a sudden that flat on the end is is clicking against the part. And also, 
the wiggling had stopped, but now it's kind of shifted out again a little bit. So I'm going to stop right there, and then we're going to bring the edge finder straight up, and then, and as, as you saw from the drawing on the board, we are now 350 thousandths away from the top dead center of the piston, so you can zero your Y hand wheel, and then you're going to just turn seven turns. Okay, so there's seven turns, so right now the spindle is right over the top dead center of the piston. So now I'm not going to touch the Y hand wheel anymore. So now I'm going to bring the, the edge finder down opposite the end of the piston, kick out the, uh, the tip again so it starts off wiggling. And again, that's fast enough. And then I'm going to just slowly approach the edge finder. It'll start slowing down the wiggling. You can already see it slowing down a little bit. Right there, I'm hearing the, the banging noise. Approach that one again. Okay. Yep, and then it just the, the the visual clue is now the it's kicked out again. So we're right about there, and I'll turn the speed off. Come straight up. We're a hundred thousandths away from from the edge of the part. So we'll zero the X hand wheel, turn two turns, and now we're right over the edge of the part. So that just shows you how we use the edge finder in, uh, to find two edges. And then now all you have to do is refer to the drawing to find out how far you have to move uh, the spindle down to get over uh, the location of the hole that you're going to drill. And then at that point you center drill and drill.